everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Fran and Angela. We are so thankful for you always. This week's episode, we have a darling guest named Jordan Jowers. Jordan is young. She loves Jesus so much. She is a school teacher in a public school system. She's been raised in the Lord. She is just one of these um, young, precious souls that just kind of sets us on fire a little bit. And aren't you so thankful for those people in your life? You will be fired up. You will be encouraged. And you're going to be like, oh, dang, wish I was young again. (laughs) But you know what? Regardless of how many days we have here on this earth, let's be excited and passionate about loving, seeking, and spreading the joy of Christ to all that we know. That's what you're going to hear out of Jordan's voice today. We love you. Enjoy the show. Well, Angela, hi, friend. How's it going? What's happening in your world today? Hey, Fran, I'm just excited to be here. This is going to be a fun conversation. Listen, we're all about some fun. What's the point in doing this if we're not going to have any fun, for crying out loud? We don't have fun. I quit. I quit. I'm giving up. (laughs) Well, today is fun, and we're so thankful for our guests. And we've said before, there's times where we have guests, there's times we don't have guests. And just this little season, here we are in the first half of the year, we've, we've got us some good guests. Well, and can we just be indulgent and say we mm-hmm. selfishly love these people so much? Yeah. Any excuse to spend time right. with them. But also they're wise and they love the Lord. They're wise and they love the Lord. So here's the deal. Here's the deal with that little statement right there, Angela, is that wisdom and love for the Lord, love for the Lord, yes, any age, but wisdom is doesn't have an age on it. Like, oh, magically, when you turn 32, you are going to be wise. And that's part of the reason why... I love today's guest, Miss Jordan Jowers. We are so happy to have you with us today. Hi, I'm so honored to be here. Whenever y'all text me and ask me to do this, well, one, like y'all said, I was so excited to see y'all because nobody <laughs> no. tells you that adulthood is going to be psycho crazy. Yes. Um, I think <laughs> it it's is. just me saying over and over, oh, yeah, I'll get to that when life slows down. And then it oh, never, mm-mm. I just repeat that again and again. Oh, yeah, I'll get to that when life slows down. Yeah. Uh, but when y'all asked me to come talk, one, such an honor, but two, just so excited to be here with y'all. You're Very so excited. precious, and you are so wise, and I well, want to ask you your age, but I'm not going to ask you your age. So <laughs> as you introduce yourself to our listeners, tell us whatever it is that you want to tell us about who you are, mm-hmm. and then we're going to jump into some great questions for for you and your wisdom at this precious young age that you are. Well, I appreciate you calling me young. Mm-hmm. I am 28. Um, that you were used, young. That used, <laughs> yeah, right. That used to feel, I remember when I was a teenager, I thought 28 was oh. so old, and now I'm here, and I'm like, yeah. I'm a baby. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. days I, which I, I teach high school at McKenzie High School. It is the best job in the world. I now, teach, when you say you teach high school, what kind of, what are, what subject are you teaching? I teach biology. Okay. Um, Just in, biology. In a small rural school, okay. I teach Biology one, biology two, and physics. So Good. I get lots of different fun science oh my subjects. Gosh. God bless you. Lots of lots of fun kids. Um, but yeah, I love I love my kids. I love teaching. I love what I do. Um, and my kids, they tell me, you know, they think twenty eight is kind of old, but then they'll be like, you know, Miss J, you make twenty eight look kind of cool. So oh, that makes me awesome. feel nice. And um, they call you Miss J. They call me Miss J. That's my awesome. mom is a teacher too, and she's never gone by Miss Jowers, and that makes me feel a little bit old. So yeah. I just stick to the Miss J and that way I can keep it first name, last name. That's Good awesome. Keep it both ways. But yeah, I teach in McKenzie. Um, I'm from Lexington, grew up there. And we're um, talking small West Tennessee town. Small West Tennessee, 731. Um, loved growing up there. Went to Knoxville and all of my friends at college, they, t- they my accent is thick as cornbread to them. <laughs> I mean, they thought I was from a dirt hole. And I was like, y'all, I actually live in a subdivision. <laughs> well, and, and speaking of college, we are sorority sisters. So yes, let's give a shout we out are. To the shout listening. out to all the pandas out there. So Roses, awesome. pandas, till we die. Yes, loved Knoxville, loved my experience there. Um, I was in an awesome Christian ministry at Knoxville called The Cross. So if you go to UT, Sarah Stokes is your girl what for The that? Cross. Let me pause right there for just a yeah. second. Was that hard for you? Like as you transitioned from small oh. West Tennessee town to this yes. massive world called UT Knoxville mm-hmm. and then finding yourself in this ministry. Mm-hmm. What in the world? How was that like? The first year, freshman year, was very hard, not only because it was a school of 25,000 kids, but because 
your whole life is flipped upside down. Mom's not there. Um, you're doing everything on your own. You don't have to do. You don't have to mm-hmm. do your laundry if you don't want yeah, to. Right. Um, <laughs> but you definitely need to, and you learn that with time. But Knoxville was a big transition, but it was also a really, really awesome space. I met beautiful people there. Um, being in a sorority opened me up to so many wonderful girls that I still actually saw a lot of my friends fr- from my sorority over Christmas break. So mm. that was super neat. Um, and then as I got older throughout my college experience, I joined a ministry called The Cross and it was for Greek students, but it you can go Greek or non-Greek. Um, and that is where the Lord, I've known the Lord my whole life. I grew up with absolutely wonderful parents. They love and fear and pursue God's heart. So that has never been an environment that I've not been in, uh, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And I know that teaching school, not every kid gets that. And yeah. so I do not forsake the beauty of that. But mm-hmm. at Knoxville, my faith became my own. Mm-hmm. And I was able to find community at the cross. And I think when you're in high school, you have everybody around you that loves the Lord and you're used to that community. And then you go to a new space and that is where I learned you can't love Christ without people. Mm. You can't love the Lord without others around you because mm. you're going to be like the people around you. The five, the five most influential people in your life are going to impact you the most. And That's the right. Lord was so gracious to give me friends who pursued God's heart, who then in turn gave me the opportunity and the knowledge and the pursuit of God myself. And, I mean, I'm in their weddings, and we go on trips together. Mm, and so fun. And it's just really, really sweet. Um, I loved my time at Knoxville. And then after Knoxville, I moved to Dallas to do the fellows program. The Lord changed my heart and moved to Texas. And the fellows was such a neat experience. I got to live in community with other believers instead of going straight into the real world. So that was kind of nice because who at 23 (laughs) is ready for adulthood? Um, I'm 28, still not ready for adulthood. So still figuring that out, but loved my time in Dallas and I plan to go to PA school and pursue medicine. And my degree from Knoxville was in kinesiology. Thought that that was the plan, which we have lots of plans for our lives and the Lord is so sovereign and so faithful. And he is so good to always give us exactly what we need. And so I worked for a physician, an ob in Dallas, loved the baby mamas, loved working with them, mm-hmm. but I would leave my job and go tutor inner city kids mm. um, in the Dallas school district. And mm. I liked the tutoring better than I liked my job at the hospital. I loved being with kids every day. Mm. I loved the relationships that I got to build. I loved when they came in, I could tell if they had a good day, a bad day. Um, I could tell their heart, um, and I loved that over time I got to see that trust and that relationship form. I I really loved that. And in college, I worked for Lifeway. I did fuge camps in college. Mm, And so I actually worked at Union. The Uh, best. It was so great. It was such a foundational part of my faith. Um, And that was another, uh, as I was reflecting back on what I wanted to do with my life uh, after college, Mm -hmm, not in college, (laughs) after college, um, I remembered how how much I loved building relationships with teens. Mm. So I moved home from Dallas and I started my master's in education. So now I am, fast forward to now, um, this is my third year at McKenzie and I love, 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 love kids. Mm. Of course they can be annoying. I can be annoying. We're all broken and... uh, but God redeems that, and there's so much beauty in just being with kids every day. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Okay. Oh, I love it so much. I just love when you can clearly articulate just the how the Lord has worked in your life, yeah. and nothing is wasted. We know that. Mm-hmm. Nothing is wasted. It's all useful and beneficial. Mm-hmm. And Okay, so you said something that we put down in these notes in front of us. Um, that I think is just beautiful. And even at your age, it's beautiful that you can see mm-hmm. um, how the Lord has been very strategic in placing mm-hmm. people in your lives. Mm-hmm. And this is what you said. This is a quote. <laughs> so I'm quoting you. And I you feel famous. S- yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Quoting Jordan Jowers, um, you said, I am truly pieces of people God has placed in my life. And it's been such a fun, hard, neat journey. You kind of said that Mm -hmm. in your opening, but Mm -hmm. I want you, I don't think I'm putting you on the spot, but let's talk about, as I'm talking, I want you to find one person, Mm -hmm. one person that you're like, wow, that person didn't maybe know it at the time. Mm -hmm. Can't be your parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they've they've always. That's right. Yeah. You already kind of said that. So one person, whether it was in high school or in Knoxville or in Dallas, 
I think we forget the power of influence that we have over mm-hmm. people's lives and mm-hmm. just our, you know, we're just going and you may even think, well, this is just a season. And But there's real power and beauty in how somebody influenced you. Right. And you can still sit in here today go, wow, I don't know if I would be where I am as a believer, as a teacher, as a person, if it wasn't for X person. Who is that person? The fr- which I prayed before I started this conversation, and I said, you know, Lord, I, f- I feel kind of famous on this podcast, and I'll let you know, to- I am with two famous, wonderful people, those of you that are listening, um, to me anyway, but which granted, y'all have also been pieces of that story, but whenever you said that, and I asked the Lord to guide my words, Sarah Stokes, my college mentor, mm. she, college, college Jordan was beautiful and the Lord loved her, but she was also a mess because you are learning your life at that point and you're going through the hard things and the really beautiful things. Um, And Sarah would meet with me every Wednesday morning at Mm. Panera and we would drink coffee and she would dig into my heart and she would say, how's your heart? And she, she, oh, I could sing her praises for days and days. And she she? was the leader of my college ministry, the cross. Um, she was probably in her thir- late thirties. Okay. Okay. Um, so Sarah, not if I got college, that wrong, not another college. No, student. no, no. <laughs> yes, um, she was over. So her job was to okay. lead the cross. Okay. Um, and I, mm. she, the, the field, the work, the harvest is there, and mm. she does the work. Mm. She loves girls well. And a, another lady through the cross, uh, Miss Gretchen, with Sarah and Miss Gretchen. Miss Gretchen opened her home every Sunday, mm. and I had Bible study with girls mm. at her house every Sunday, and mm. that was. Such a foundational moment in my faith. We would cry. We would have a meal together. We would pray. And I just think of all the times throughout Scripture that Christ has meals with people mm-hmm. and how when we give thanks and, we in, and we're with one another, that opens up our hearts. Yeah. And we were able to just read the Word. We actually walked through Genesis, and we read Scripture, and we didn't have a study guide or a mm. study, nothing. We just opened the Word, and we said, what is God saying to us? What do we see here? And it was so wow. fruitful. And I remember leaving that year of my life and thinking I want to be her mm. and I when I started teaching at McKenzie I was driving back and forth from I moved back in with my parents that's okay yes, in your is. late 20s to do that um and they were super I mean they're wonderful and how sweet is it to have that season with your parents as an adult mm. I really loved mm. that time and I enjoy my parents as an adult so much I just appreciate my time with them so much um, from that perspective but yeah. I was driving back and forth to McKenzie and I remember praying and crying and the drive was, it was wearing on me driving 45 to 50 mm. minutes every day there and back. And I just remember asking the Lord, please, if it's your will, give me a space and a place to live here in McKenzie. My first year, COVID hit, so all the housing prices went mm-hmm. up. And then my second year teaching, um, I could not understand why the Lord didn't give me a space. And then in February of my second year, my grandfather passed. Mm. And I remember looking back. It's so funny when we look back, we see God's hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and if only we could trust in the moment. That, mm. that he's there. But I remember looking back and I thought, if I would have moved to McKenzie, because after work, I would drive back to Lexington and I would go see my grandparents. Um, and my grandfather, if you know me, he was the, oh, he was the best thing ever. He loved the Lord so much. And of course, I was just the sun, moon, and stars to him, mm. right? Um, as every grandchild is to their grandparents. But I, I remember looking back and thinking, and I wrote in my prayer journal the night before he passed, I wrote, because it had snowed in McKenzie, and I wanted to be there with my friends, and I wanted to live there. And I remember writing in my prayer journal, I don't understand, but I trust. Mm. And the next day he passed. Wow. And I just think, wow, the Lord had me home for a reason. And then I started my third year, which was August of last year, and I um, was looking for a house, and I ended up, now I now live in a basement apartment on a farm with oh. a lovely lady, Miss Diane. She's my landlord, and we are besties. Oh, wow. And I, and I've always and Mom told me she said you've always wanted to live on a farm, and we've always prayed for. I don't. It's just crazy how the Lord works mm. it out. So, but I'm able to live in McKenzie, and I lead. Long story short, I lead Bible study with my girls. Oh, listen now. So it's full mm. circle. It's full yes. circle. Can I ask a question before we move on? Mm-hmm. When you met with your mentor, mm-hmm. you said she she dug into your heart. Mm-hmm. Do you have any? Do you remember any questions she asked you? Do you have any advice for us if if we want to sit down with a younger person mm-hmm. and help them in some kind of way? Mm-hmm. What questions or what conversations did y'all have that were especially helpful beyond just surface level? Sarah was really good to be firm but gentle with me because she was so wise and she saw that if I took a certain path where it would lead me and Mm -hmm. she would try to explain and now I see teaching high school 
where she was coming from because in my head, I think I just want to tell these kids, don't do that. But if I say that, they're going to want to do that more. Um, But she was just so gentle to say, hey, I don't think that's best for you, but you putting it on me and saying, I think you should pray about that. I Mm -hmm. think you should ask the Lord, hey, Mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Um, And I've had so many people in my life. I mean, the Lord has just been so kind to me. Sarah and so many people in my life love and pursue Christ. And in turn, that makes me just love and pursue him more. I mean, I just have all of my deepest friendships are rooted in the gospel. Mm. Oh. As they should be. What all of my deepest friendships. And I mean, I have so many girlfriends that I will call and we don't have to talk every day. Um, but two of my deepest friends from college, Meredith and Paige, I mean, they both love the Lord. We were in the cross together. Um, and my best friend from high school, she loves the Lord, Madison. And I mean, I can even list, I could just rattle off so many names mm. of girls that love and pursue Christ. And actually, my sorority little sister, Kaylee, we're actually doing, have you ever heard of the prayer, 40 days, the prayer circle, pray the circle? With Ma- like Mark Batterson? Yes. That, that, yes. I'm yeah. doing that study yeah. with Kaylee oh, right now. So, so good. It is so wonderful. I guess prayer is my weakest spiritual discipline, which mm-hmm. I think that's, I mean, some people are prayer warriors. My mother, there is never, a, I mean, she, that lady, I think she prays in her head constantly. <laughs> she, I, I just adore her and her fervent prayer life. Um, and I aspire to have that, but I read scripture every day and I try to make time in my life. Um, I've learned that if I don't wake up every day and pursue Christ, the enemy's going to pursue me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and cause I think, Oh, I've grown up in the church. I love the Lord. I know so much about Christ and I've had a few m- mistakes, which I'm going to continue to make mistakes cause I'm human. But, uh, my biggest mistakes are when I thought that I was fine. Mm-hmm. Or and when I thought that my fine. right when We're I thought that fine. my human strength was enough, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think the word has been such an awesome. I've read she reads truth for years. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been such a great resource for me, and I've done awesome. I'm reading a great book right now, One Thousand Gifts, mm-hmm. um, and it, I mean I just those are such great resources. Um, but she reads truth is wonderful because it gives you a devotional, but it also makes you dig into scripture. Devotionals are great, but yeah. there there's nothing that can speak to you like scripture. Yeah. Right. Um, the word of God is living and breathing. So, yeah. um, well, and just the fact that you're pouring back into whether it's just your students in the classroom, mm-hmm. you know, right. Or you're sitting and, and doing Bible study or community with, with girls. It's just, that's the investment, you know, mm-hmm. you were poured into and there was a, there was fruit from that. And now mm-hmm. you're turning around and doing the exact same thing. It wasn't something that you just looked at as, oh, that was nice. Thank you. you right. Know, you yeah. know, you really are doing something with it. You recognize the importance of it. Okay. So <clears throat> that's all great and good, mm-hmm. but we all know that we all have our own challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every day you just said, you know, you we want to get up and spend time with the Lord before you go to work and you do all these things. Mm-hmm. All of our days are very structured. Yes. They can tend to all look the same. There's not necessarily, that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It can become something that's very routine. Yes. But what do you think right now? I mean, people are going to listen to this in the first part of 2022. Um, it could be that Angela and I have talked about this earlier that, Kind of the fun and the yeehaw of a new mm-hmm. year have worn off a little bit. And, right. you know, I don't know, maybe not. But what challenges, what challenges do you have in your walk with the Lord right now? Because it's not always fun right. and easy. Well, life in a broken world. I think the world just gets so heavy. Mm. Um if it's not a school shooting, it's a, it's something else. It's a catastrophic storm mm. or I just feel like life in this world, we just can't catch a break. It's always heavy. Yeah. Um, And I was reading Anne Lamont or Anne Voskamp this morning. Anne Lamont's another author, but Anne Voskamp, she does 1000 gifts. And she talked about how, how do we find hope whenever Mm -hmm. a child, whenever a Mm -hmm. child passes, where, Mm -hmm. where is that hope? Mm -hmm. Um, And if Christ is good, then we should think everything else is good. And that's really easy to say. But then she talked about how the resurrection came from the greatest suffering in the Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So if this great suffering can produce great joy, 
Can't all the brokenness here on earth, can't God orchestrate that and make everything really beautiful? Right. So all of the hard parts of this world, God doesn't want them to happen, but he uses them for his mm-hmm. good and his glory. And I just, I loved how she's, which I'm a big joy, fun. Mm-hmm. I don't love the morning. Mm-hmm. I don't love the sadness. <laughs> that is not, if you're an Enneagram person, I'm a seven. <laughs> I want all the fun all the time. So the sadness kills me. I yeah. can't. I, I, And I don't want to run from brokenness because I'm learning that. In the suffering is God's greatest joy. Yeah. If we dig in and we say, I am hurting, this is hard, God really shows his face. Whereas when we when we find our own worldly joy, we don't op- open up the opportunity for God joy to come in yeah. or for true joy. Mm. Um, it's just empty, false joy, which granted the world, the God gives us thing in, things in this world that are happy and that do bring us joy. But anytime that we put our hope in those and not him, it's our idol. Mm. Um, so I just, I love how she said in suffering is actually your greatest joy, which is so counterintuitive yeah. to the world. Right. We think that suffering should never be associated with joy. Why but would a he world, allow suffering? He does. He right. does because and it, and, it, and it in turn draws us into him. Um, so I just, I'm trying to really, as a 28 year old, I'm also single and I, I live by myself, which is really fun, uh, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> but I you can do whatever you want to no do. No schedule. <laughs> I, I spend all that teacher money how I want to spend it. Uh, but I have learned that if I needed it, I would have it. Um, my mom is so wonderful, and her she lost both of her parents very young, and she's always told me if I was supposed to have parents, I would. Um, and that never made sense to me. I always thought that she mm. was just that was such an injustice to her. Mm. Um, but it's true that God's glory is revealed through mm. every single piece of brokenness. There is nothing that He wastes. Yeah. He uses everything for His good and His yeah. glory. And I, if I lean into suffering, I will see His face. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really trying to do that. And I, and being at my age, being single, sometimes I feel behind. Mm. Um, but even I, then, I think, oh, but if I get married. I'll be happy, but then I'll still have problems then. Right. We live in a broken world, and any time we put our joy into anything, husband, kids, job, whatever, it's always going to leave us empty. Our only fulfillment is going to be in Christ. Amen, sister. So I, I try to keep that mindset and, that, and opening up the Word every day and surrounding myself with people that love the Lord. That's what keeps me centered. Okay, if you weren't being a teacher right now, <laughs> what would you want to be? Let's not talk about medical school. Let's yes. live in like a okay. Let's talk about like a fun <clears throat> pretend world. Like, boy, if you could do anything, what would you want to do? Jordan I would Jowers? want to be the girl Bob Goff. Oh, <laughs> I see. totally see that. <laughs> Let me be your helper. Yes, we can do it together. Mm, he is just can carry your balloons. Oh. Yes, he is just so fun. The I mean, best. he loves so deeply, yes. and he travels, and he sees God's creation, and he loves all of God's people. And I mean, he's just always doing such great work, but he's doing it in a really fun way. Well, he doesn't. I think sometimes, what especially now in this crazy time that right. we're living in. We just can make things so hard. Yes. So hard. Harder than they need to be. And And I have to remind myself over and over, when you want to get hung up in anything, it's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second. Let's just rewind this thing for Mm -hmm. just a minute and remember God is love. Mm -hmm. And Jesus loved well, Mm -hmm. even when it was easy to love, even when it was hard to love, Jesus loved people. And so, golly, you know, you just kind of want to go, that's what Bob Goff does. Yeah. He just loves people well. He does it so well. And I just think he sums up, the, the Bible is full of so much knowledge and wisdom about Christ. And sometimes that can seem overwhelming because mm-hmm. you think, oh, my gosh, I have to remember the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> and I have to remember every single parable that Jesus did every and all every single miracle he performed. And you just sometimes it feels overwhelming. But when it comes down to it, the gospel and I heard I can't remember where I heard this quote, but it is. Shallow enough for an infant to wade in, but deep enough for an elephant to swim in. Listen. And I love that because the gospel is simple enough for anybody to understand. You love the the father Mm -hmm. who gave his life Mm -hmm. for you and who now lives Mm -hmm. in you. Mm -hmm. And you love other people so that they can know that true love. That's the gospel. That's it. Period. But also, it's so deep and so rich. And we can just keep digging and keep digging and keep digging. And 
I teach in biology, I teach on evolution. And I had a student ask me, and I tell, I tell my kids, you know, I'm not going to push my faith on you because mm -hmm. state, um, right. but I want you to know that my heart is for you to ask me any question. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a student come up to me, which teaching, I love, I love what I teach and I love my job, but I am there to love kids. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I love my job so much. And, and to make it a fun, safe place for them and for them to love school and to say my teacher loved me and I know that I can do whatever yeah. I want to do because yeah. that's what love compels yeah. is is joy and full mm -hmm. life to the fullest most abundant um but I had a student she said how do you balance evolution and faith in the same how does that work for mm -hmm. you Miss Shay and I said well you know God is bigger than us and if we tried to understand him it's like and I, I think this might be C.S. Lewis who I also love mm -hmm. but it's like a worm trying to understand mm -hmm. a man it's just mm -hmm. not we're not possible it's not possible yeah um, but we sure try because yeah, right. we want to. Um, but I told her, I said, we would not want our God to be something or someone that we could understand. Mm -hmm. We want him to be bigger than us. We want him to be more profound than us. And I said, I had a big faith breakdown, which I've known the Lord my whole life. BBS, seven years old. ABCs, admit, believe, confess. Like I, I, I've known and walked with the Lord my whole life. And I know that everybody doesn't get that, but get that experience. Um, but I was talking to this student, and I was telling her, and it was fall break last year. I just had this thought. Mm -hmm. I was reading Daniel, and it's super prophetic and, mm -hmm. like, lots of prophecy. And I stepped back, and I thought, what in the world? This is what am – what am I reading right now? What if all of this is not true? Mm -hmm. um, which see, and I – Looking back now, I think that doubt is just so normal, and it's good for us to sift through it because God wants us to keep pursuing him in those moments of question. He doesn't want us to just give up. He wants us to ask mm -hmm. um, because he always answers. But I remember reading after a few days after I had that meltdown, I was like, okay, I'm going to keep reading scripture, but I just don't know about you. And <laughs> I know that the Lord was like, Jordan, bless your heart. But I was <laughs> reading uh, John 6, and it's when Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's telling them, I am the Savior. And they are all like, you're crazy. Yeah. You're a lunatic, psycho man. And Peter turns to him and Jesus says, are you going to leave me too? And I just think about how deeply God loves us. And when mm -hmm. he asks Peter that, and he's like, are you going to leave me too? Yeah. Like, you too? Yeah. And Peter says, where else would I go? Yeah. And I think that whenever I think about faith, I'm like, yeah, I could say that God's not real, but where else am I going to go? What right. else offers what Christ offers? Exactly. And there's a French philosopher. I, can't, I read the quote on She Reads Truth, I think, and he says, you know, if God is not real and you don't believe he is mm -hmm. and you pass, no harm, no foul. We go in the ground, nothing happens. But if God is real and you don't believe, you've made the greatest eternal cosmic mistake yeah. of your life. And I would rather risk it, which I know God's real. He's proved himself to me so many times. Um, and I, tell, I told my student this, and she was like, wow, okay. But she's smarter than me, of course. But I just remember I, at that age, I love being able to be present for kids because I needed somebody to pour that truth mm. into me um, and to be that vessel for Christ. But yeah, I, I think where else would I go mm. if I didn't have Jesus? And yes, evolution. And there's so many things about the world that are hard and that we don't have answers yeah, to, right. but he's going to redeem. And, and that's he okay. Is good. It's okay. Yeah, we don't have to know. That's right. It's okay. And mm -hmm. I think it's just freeing for people to hear you say, and because they've all thought it too, mm -hmm. is that we don't have to have it all figured out. No. We're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. It is okay. And when we do have those moments, that's why Christian community is so crucial. That's right. I remember crying to one of my friends about it, and he said, Jordan, you are fine. It is okay. <laughs> I just remember being like, oh my gosh, freaking out. And he, yeah. he told me, it is totally okay. Yeah. You are normal and we are going to sift through this and I will give you all the resources and all the prayer yeah. until God, until you choose to see God's face. God yeah. never turned from me. Yeah. I just had a little human used, broken moment. Well, and listen, he's used to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Israelites. I'm just an Israelite. We he parts are. the Red Sea for me. I walk through it and then I get over there and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> you definitely just parted the sea for me, but I don't know if you're going to be faithful again. And the Lord's just like, are you kidding me? Like, how quickly you have forgotten, sister. I, I can't remember where I saw the quote, but it said, um, God looks down from heaven at me like a squirrel trying to pass through traffic. And I know oh, that that yes. is how, like, I'm just like scurrying everywhere. There has to it. be a meme about that somewhere, because I can <laughs> sure. totally see that in my head right now as soon as you said that. And I'm just so sporadic all the time. And I know the Lord is just like, if you would just chill out. 
Stay in the right-hand lane. Drive 55 miles an hour, Jordan. <laughs> I feel like so many of our listeners, us included, are listening to Jordan going, well, yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Mm-hmm. So for the person listening who, you know, and Fran and I have talked a lot about disciplines and quiet mm-hmm. time. And, you know, for some people, it's not very quiet time. Just time right. with the Lord. Yeah. Intentional time. Encourage people listening who agree with what you're saying, but don't feel that closeness or aren't in a daily routine or don't even know where to begin. Mm -hmm. What has worked for you? What do you enjoy about time you're spending with the Lord? If people don't know where to start, just, just what would you say to that person? Well, and granted I am 28 and I live by myself, but mornings work best for me. Um, I try to wake up. What time do you get up? Well, I used to work out in the mornings, but I will say the new year, my resolution has been, I was starting to, I was working out and I made that a priority, but I didn't have enough time for scripture in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I've started working out in the afternoons okay. and reading scripture in the mornings. Okay. Um, and it just, granted, a workout starts your day off great, but there is nothing like God's eternal peace mm-hmm. that gives you the restoration throughout your day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and just that rejuvenation mm-hmm. throughout your day. But um, you got to, I mean, because you've got to be at school early. I got to be at school at 745. Okay. That's so, not horrible. No, it's not terrible, but I I get up at 530. Mm-hmm. And Are you I a will coffee go, drinker? I am. A, I've started drinking tea, mixing it up, coffee mm-hmm. tea. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will go on a walk. I'll either walk on the treadmill. I have a treadmill at my sweet little basement apartment. Or I will go walk on the farm. Mm, And I will pray while I walk. And so by the time I'm reading scripture, I kind of know what God has to talk to me about. Mm -hmm. And so things stand out more Mm, as I'm reading scripture. But if I don't get time for it in the morning, sometimes I really just do want to go on a run. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be the same every day. And that's hard for a scheduled person like me. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everything has to be the same every Mm -hmm. single day. I feel like you need to say that one more time. (laughs) It's okay that not everything happens on your schedule every day Mm -hmm. it's totally okay it's okay if you don't close all of your apple watch rings or (laughs) you don't uh, sometimes I just have to take the watch off and I'm like it's okay I'm just Mm -hmm. such a perfectionist and pride is something that I have to battle Mm -hmm. um I wanted to be a doctor and the Lord said be a teacher talk about humility um yeah (laughs) uh but it's I've loved my job and I can't imagine not following the Lord's heart because I mean he there's there's so much fullness in him but if I don't get it in the mornings I try to do it right when I get home from work that way my brain has not thought about other things um because doing it at night is great and some people can but I fall asleep or I'm so tired that I Mm -hmm. rush it so I try to really give myself that time and I also I set a reminder. <laughs> I love reminders on the on the Me iPhone. Too. I have Me a reminder too. at seven a.m. Um, to pray for the opportunity to pr- that the gospel will present itself. To be oh. bold, to have a clear message, um, because I'm around kids and people every day who may not know Christ. And I mean, every day is a gospel opportunity. So there's newness and freshness in every single day. Every day has this wonderful. It's I, you get caught up in the mundane, but there is really just so much expectation that can happen every day. So I pray that at seven. Um, and if I don't get other time in the word, I try to, you know, find scripture in the afternoons or I, I, and I always, before I pray, I ask the Lord to speak to me so that my time's not wasted. I think we, the the problem is not that God doesn't do things for us is that we forget to ask. Mm. Um, there's, and a, there's forget, a verse about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there yes. is. And then just forget to notice what yeah. he's done for you throughout the day. Yes. And I am doing the 40 days of prayer. So mm-hmm. this, I can't think of the actual name mm-hmm. of it. We'll the find prayer, it and link it. Yes, link it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm doing that with some friends, wonderful girls. And what does that look like? What's that format? Do you we know have yet? a text group message. Um, and so we will all do the, like, at the end of the day, we will all discuss, like, hey, this is what's going on in my heart. This is what I got from it. Um, and it's just super neat, not only to talk about the Lord with other females, but to be able to see their brokenness mm-hmm. and encourage them in that, but also allow yourself to be vulnerable, to be encouraged. It's just a really sweet, sacred space. That's so good. It really is. Um, I thoroughly enjoy that. So, I mean, but I'm just, I've been so blessed with such community and the Lord, if you look for him, he'll, you'll find him every single time. I think that if whenever I forget him, any time that I look for him, I find him. So That's a good word. He, mm-hmm. he appears. He's always there. He's always there. It's never him. It's always us. That's right. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. That's, um. right. That's right. Okay. As we wrap up, let me ask you a question because you work with high school students. Yes. And I think that in a, in a world that can seem so very negative, 
all the time. Mm-hmm. And there, there will be people that think, oh, my gosh, there's just no hope mm-hmm. for the future when it comes to Jesus and Christianity and all the things. But I know that even in a, um, in a public school setting, mm-hmm. you see a lot of hope. Mm-hmm. I do. I know you do. So where do you see that coming up out of these? I'm guessing the ages of your students are 15, 16, 17-ish, right, right around in there. Where do you see hope? High schoolers are about to embark on this new season. I mean, either they're going to go to college or they're going to go to TCAT or they are going to enter into the workforce. And there's always a new season. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be something new coming. Mm -hmm. And that newness, it's fresh every day. It's fresh every morning. Um, But kids are just so pure Mm -hmm. at heart. Mm -hmm. Um, Their laughter, the things that they find funny. Mm -hmm. um, And they're just so tender, too. But... Coming off of Advent and time where we celebrate Jesus, is, he's, he's come, mm-hmm. he was born, mm-hmm. um, and now we're living in this in-between two Advents where mm-hmm. he's going to come again. But I just, any time that I get caught up in the suffering or the trials, I think he will come and he will restore. And Revelation 21, I mean, he is going to bring a new heaven and a new earth. Mm-hmm. And this earth, there are things that Jesus will give that, I mean, will not fade away Mm -hmm. and so yes there are hard things in everybody's life and teaching high school being with kids can be especially hard Mm -hmm. um but I have the opportunity to show them this Mm -hmm. love that Mm -hmm. I so sweetly know um and that love that will return again he will come again so I just cling Uh, to that hope what a gift they have in you I I think there's they think that most days but there's (laughs) There are students that are like, we have the best teacher in the whole world. And then there are students that don't realize they have the best teacher well, I appreciate that. in the whole world. And what a bright light you are Thank to you. those students. What a bright light you are in McKenzie and here in Jackson. And anybody that knows you is just so lucky Thank you. to Thank have you. Um, the joy. We're just going to call you BG Jr. <laughs> Uh, that is the mm-hmm. highest. Talk about being compared to Christ. I mean. Right under it. Bob right Goff. under it. BG Jr. right here in the house, everybody. And Bobette. Bobette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Lord have mercy. Oh. That's precious and awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank y'all for having me. And mm. like you said that, I mean, you say that I'm a light, but y'all, like I talked about earlier, pieces of people, y'all mm. have been such impacts. And y'all, the way that y'all show and reveal the gospel in every single facet of your life makes me love him more. So Y'all are awesome. You're I love sweet. you both very much. We, so. love, we you. love you. You're easy to love, Jordan Jowers. Ditto. Y'all Bob are the best. Bet. Bob Bobette. Bob, <laughs> Bob Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. Oh, goodness gracious, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Brent and Angela. We'll see you next time. Y'all have a great day. Okay, everybody. If you love this podcast, help us keep getting great guests and high-quality content by leaving us a rating and a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to like and subscribe because that helps other people find us. You can follow us on all the socials. We will link to those in the show notes. And y'all don't forget, March 4th and 5th, it's coming up at the barn at Snyder Farms, the IF Gathering for Women. We would love for y'all to join us. We will link to that on our socials as well, or you can contact us for more information. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you'll join us again next week.